You've seen him on Conan O'Brien. You've seen him on uh, Jay Leno Tonight Show. And he, as I mentioned, the Comedy Store has a wall that only a certain select few get to have their name on there. This comedian has his name on that wall, right? Uh, he's famous in, in the UK, uh, uh, Comedy Central. I just can't say enough about him. We're lucky to have him, everybody. Stephen Allen Green, everybody. Give it up for Stephen. God bless you. Keep it going for Bert. Bert put this whole thing together. No, keep it going for him until he's out of the building. Keep it going. He's further doors that way, Bert. Uh, would it be okay if I moved a little bit forward? It looked like there was some kind of vaginal chasm between the audience and the comedian. And I just, you know, uh, not that I'm using any metaphor in particular. When I found out, I was booked at the House Plant Nation. Uh, I got very excited and then a little disappointed because uh, I thought that Bert booked Soup Plantation. That's <laughs> the gig I wanted and uh, it never happened Then they closed down. But I don't want to tell you how to run things. Bert's a very smart businessman and uh, we do have people of color here. That's a lovely thing. But with, with the particular name, maybe you need to do a little uh, rounding out of the PR in terms of House Plant Nation, if not pronounced right, uh, it sounds like house plantation. You're never going to get Dave Chappelle down here. Okay, never. Okay, unless he's coming down to make fun of the name. But it's really lovely. The coffee's great. The staff is wonderful. The plants are, are just fantastic. And what I mean by plants is that we've hired certain people to sit in the audience and laugh. There's one of them. That's an old term, plant. Uh, but I had some. I made some notes and things to tell you. Um, so yeah, so my name is Stephen Allen Green. I didn't have to look in there to know my name. <laughs> I want to point that out. But yeah, no, I've, I've, uh, I hosted Comedy Central UK. I did that in England. I lived in England. Uh, I wrote for The Tonight Show. I never was on The Tonight Show. I was on Conan, but as an actor. And uh, Comedy Store, name on the wall. And you know, I've had some great, great adventures in comedy and some really cool credits. But these days, I self-identify as a part-time Uber driver. <laughs> and actually, it's not that bad of a job when I have to do it. I enjoy it. And I like fucking with people in the car, if you know what I mean. It's like, welcome to Uber Airways. Oh, it's funny. You know, please put your tray table in the upright position. Oh, isn't that cute? I just dropped acid about 20 minutes ago. What? So that could be an issue. Uh, I've had some amazing, amazing adventures. Uh, met some amazing people. And, uh, you know, it's tough when you've achieved a certain level, you're still working, you're doing stuff under the radar, you're making movies, doing voiceovers, and things are happening fine. But imagine being an Uber driver comedian, picking up someone at the comedy store, and they're, they've just seen some comic that's about 30 years younger and doing your material. No, I'm not kidding about that. But, um, and they get in the car, and you've got to have an attitude. You've got to have a positive attitude. You've got to be like, you know, see my, that's my name on the wall, yeah. All right, let's go for a ride, you know. And you think, okay, maybe that will inspire them, you know, a little bit in life. And, you know, we all have ups and downs, and, and the downs ain't so bad, you know, because when I was up, I was very wealthy, and I didn't really need a lot of people, you know, when you, when you just got your couple of friends you hang out with. So, uh, you know, going, getting, losing the wealth and becoming, you know, a regular working guy, you get to meet people and see things and go to restaurants you never want to try and you meet people, and uh, I had this one lady in the car a couple of years ago, uh, an African woman from Africa, and she gets, I, I mean, you know, I don't mean she just arrived and she had, you know, spears or things like that, I'm just saying that she talked like this because she's from Africa, and she gets in the car and she goes, who are you? And I go, I'm Stephen, your Uber driver. She goes, no, who are you really? And I go, I'm really Stephen, your Uber driver. And I go, well, who, you know, what do you mean? She goes, no, you're something else. There's something about you. There's something very special about you. And I'm thinking, uh, this either means sex or a nice tip or both. And uh, <clears throat> uh, wh what do you mean? She goes, well, who are you really? Okay, look to see how long the ride is and how many times I've had to tell this story and how awkward it can get, like right now. Uh, so I told the story, you know, comedy store, comic, 81, 91, did all these great things, toured the country, toured Canada, went to England where I became famous adjacent, as I like to say it, 
I played all the great venues. I hosted Comedy Central, as mentioned. I did this, I did that. I became friends with Eddie Izzard and Ricky Gervais. And I had a great time. And I acted in a TV pilot with an actress from Absolutely Fabulous. And I did this. And I produced this giant show that became a television comedy show broadcast on British television that I produced and financed. It was great. Had one of the biggest stars in the world. I had this, I had that, and I came back, and then this happened, and then, you know, uh, I had to come back because my mother was ill, and I had to, and I kind of got stuck here, and then, you know, uh, but I love this Uber driving, and I still write jokes for comics, and, you know, and whatever. And then she says to me, now I'm driving, okay? Which means, as an Uber driver, you look at the road, right? <laughs> You're looking at the GPS, you're looking at the Uber app, which is like, you know, sending you a message like, you know, you're talking too fucking much. Okay, fine. <laughs> you know, so, you know, and, uh, you know, because it's going to call on the next ride, and then you're looking at the radio, and then you're looking at traffic, and then you're thinking about your life and, you know, how to kill yourself. So, um, basically, I, I, she said to me, and this is one of the glor most glorious things that had ever been said to me, and... My mother was a very, very inspiring woman. She passed away in 2010. Uh, she was offered a film contract from Warner Brothers Studios when she was 16. Her mother wouldn't let her go to California from New York. So she came out here and became a showbiz mom and still performed. And she ended up starting a school. She was fired from every vocational school because they didn't like her unorthodox ways of not reading from the script. She opened up her own school worked day and night, graduated over 37,000 students, placed them, had the highest placement rate in the nation, meaning that if you went to her school, you were guaranteed a career and a job, was honored by Mayor Tom Bradley at City Hall. She was a great woman. <clears throat> and then I broke down and I cried. I pulled over, pulled to the side of the road and had a fucking cry, big old man cry. And Tutu's going, oh, that's okay, that's okay, you know. I know, I know. Okay, I'm okay. Let's get you to your destination. So, <clears throat> drove her another few miles, dropped her off, and joked and said, don't forget to leave me a nice tip. <laughs> you know, figuring, maybe the sympathy little, you know, am I an actor? You know, that's the whole thing about acting and stuff, is that you wonder sometimes, am I really feeling this, or am I playing a role right now? If I'm playing a role, that means two things. If I'm subconsciously doing it, it means, God damn, I'm a really good actor. <laughs> Don't even know I'm doing it. <laughs> and the other part of that is, I am really friggin' evil in that case. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, she went up to her office. She called me at her office, asked me my, uh, my Venmo. Gave her my Venmo. And standing right next to me on a $12 ride, I had no money. I had $12 to my name. I put that in the tank. Didn't work. I should have put gas, but seriously. <laughs> Zero dollars. She gave me a thousand bucks. Yeah. That's why I make sure after or during every Uber ride, I make sure I pull over and break down. And break down. <laughs> That's a true story. Um, uh, but I'm known as a legend. Now, I call myself a legend comedian, not because I've done amazing things. One of the first Americans of my generation to go over to England. I knew nobody over there, and I became an instant hit. I made some mistakes, but I worked everywhere. I was managed by the same company, Avalon, that managed John Oliver, and, and I did all kinds of wonderful things with wonderful people. I had great stories with Sir Ian McKellen and, 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 and getting drunk. I called Sir Ian McKellen a Teletubby. Ah. By mistake. I'll tell you that story, but first I want to tell you another story. So, uh, a comedy store in the old days. The old days, we didn't have microphones. <laughs> uh, I'm making fun of myself, you know, as an old person. Hi. How you doing? So, <clears throat> we had a comedy store in Sunset, still there. And we had a comedy store in Westwood. And they, you know, and so you get spots to work both gigs the same night. And Monday night, which I was one of the MCs, would always run late because we didn't know if Robin Williams was going to come in and do 45 minutes, followed by Richard Pryor doing an hour, and then a lot of people just signing up to do the gig. We didn't know who they were, so they might go over time and all that stuff. So just run late. And I'm looking at my watch. I'm going to be at Westwood in 20 minutes. There's no way I'm going to make it. 
and then I saw that the comedy store show was running so late, ah, screw it, because um, I can't say fuck it, right? <laughs> Even though fuck it is a Thai river, and we're gonna be in the main, okay, never mind. Uh, so I'm driving down Sunset Boulevard West. I am, you know, I have a 73 BMW, who wasn't that year, but um, of existence. And, and anyway, I'm driving down, I get pulled over by the Beverly Hills Police. Woo! They pull me over. I pull over to the side on Sunset Boulevard, and I did a couple things you could never do today. If you did, you'd get shot. <laughs> Even if you're white, you'd get shot. You'd get shot. So I get, first, first of all, I got out of the car, and I went, okay, hang on, guys, hang on. Okay, bang, bang, dead, dead, okay. Then I went to the back and opened up the trunk. Uh, bang, bang, dead, dead again. <laughs> then I opened up my prop case. Bang, bang, dead, dead, kick. And then I took out my ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> and the dummy took over. <laughs> Please don't give us a ticket, officers, because we're just running from one comedy store to the other. Shut up. I don't want to listen to your bullshit. Oh, don't listen to him. By the way, don't check in the glove compartment. He doesn't have any cocaine. Don't go in there. The cops were laughing their asses off. Let me go. That's the kind of world we lived in, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you know, I'm looking for a new girlfriend. I, I've learned, I've been in many relationships. I've been married. I've been in many relationships and I've been married. So what does that say? Okay, I've been in a relationship or I've been married. No, I didn't mean it like that, like you're not relating to your wife. Now I'm in trouble somehow. <laughs> but I'm looking for a new girlfriend. When I say looking, I'm not looking. Just see if I meet someone. Because it's like, look at me. What a mess. Right? Look at this, you know. Bad knee, haven't worked out, put on some belly, got the grandpa beard, but you know, I'm interested, right? Hey, I didn't get a thousand bucks on an Uber tip. Um, <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm really thinking this time, because my last couple of girlfriends have been off the charts fucking crazy, absolutely nuts. Last one stalked me, and I mean literally stalked me. Don't want to get into it, it'll bring us down. But what am I looking for? I'm looking for a beautiful woman, and beauty's in the eyes, but I like beauty, I like radiant beauty and physical beauty and, and intellect, great sense of humor, a um, little bit of education, uh, you know, uh, no offense to anybody here, but not a drug addict, uh, not an alcoholic, uh, even recovering, I didn't understand recovering, but that's a little intense, but you know, okay, whatever, we're all different things. A uh, little bit of an education, you know, would be nice. Uh, you know, so I'm thinking of all these things at the same time going, you know, looking at myself going, look at you, loser, and you're, you've got these, but you know, I think it's reasonable, you know, and then I thought, well, how reasonable is reasonable? Maybe I'd like a woman who's got a 98 mile per hour baseball pitch. <laughs> One who could walk through walls. <clears throat> This bit isn't going to get any better. <laughs> so I thought I'd just point it out. Let me just look at my notes and then maybe I'll do something with the guitar. Uh, but um, I told you the. Uh, oh, so um, uh, a couple of. I'll just throw, let me throw a bunch of lines at you and then I'll do a quick story and, and a music thing and I'll go. Uh, so my. This is all re written in the last 48, 72 hours. So I didn't. Yeah. Okay. My proctologist thinks I have my head up my ass, but my cardiologist thinks my heart is in the right place. <laughs> Maybe Tim Walls didn't serve in a war, but he taught in a high school, and if that ain't a dangerous battlefield, <laughs> hey, I don't know what it is. That's a good premise. I need to write stuff about it. <laughs> Kamala Harris, I totally support her. I know we're in Orange County. I don't care. I'm going to vote for her. I do. I'm going to vote for Kamala. Um, uh, you know, uh, and the sexist joke would be, if I did it, I'm not going to do it, but I'll tell you what I would do, I, but I wouldn't do it. But the sexist joke of a woman being president would be the first, and now please welcome, uh, for the State of the Union, please welcome the State of the Union. Well, I just said that, so well, why are you criticizing me? We're working. Shut up. Okay, fine. <laughs> please welcome the State of the Union address, our new president, President Kamala Harris. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh. She gets her speech, unfolds the paper, <clears throat> looks around. I'm fine and leaves. Okay. <laughs> That's a great joke. 
the Huck Tua girl, you know the Huck Tua girl? She's the spitting image of my ex. Okay, it's funny in the Uber. Um, I wonder when I'm dead and buried if I'm gonna be getting up every two hours to pee. That worries me, concerns me, because you're, you're dead. Uh, well, this is terrible. I live in a mortuary. I have my own dead room. <laughs> it's a kid's joke. All right. When I become a billionaire, I'm gonna skip the part about becoming a millionaire. This is a time, this is a time waster. Plus, I'm gonna hire someone to take naps for me. I'm gonna to be too busy. All right, this is a good one. <clears throat> First Trump nearly gets shot in the head. What does he do? He brings a Kennedy into the administration. Man and woman stuck in space. Current news, right? Man and woman stuck in space. I hope she doesn't make him float over the couch. As opposed to sleeping on the couch. Because we're in space. Do I need to set it up with that little, little bit? Really? Okay. All right, all right. The other joke I have for them. More trouble for the two astronauts trapped in the space, in the space station. They've just been served with eviction papers. <laughs> Which city do you think weighs more, Los Angeles or New York? New York. New York. Why? I don't know. You know why? Maybe. Oh, this really happened. I went to Starbucks, and the guy took my order. Right? You know what do you want? I went blah blah, and he went, you know, and he goes, "Can I get your name real quick?" He says, "You know, they do that these days." Barry was talking about lingo today. You know, can I get your name real quick? So I was hearing things literally, and I, you know, because I'm sometimes. An asshole. <laughs> and so he said, Can I get your name real quick? And my name's Steven. And so I went, Sven. <laughs> I was once in London and I had I bought this big leather, expensive leather couch for my flat, right, my apartment. And I had to sign some kind of contract of something, maybe for upkeep or whatever. And so I'm sat at the desk, as they say, sat. Sat at the desk with a young lady who's the person serving me, waiting on me. And they're so polite over there, especially in that part of London. They're very much like this. You know, and I pretend, coming back to, to Hollywood, that I've been British. I've done that, actually. <clears throat> but let me tell you this first. So she says to me, um, uh, okay, sign here, sign here, so initial here, initial there, answer that question, you know, on the form. And then she points to, to, the, to the thing, the application, whatever it was, and says, uh, would you mind signing below? So without missing a beat, I grabbed the paper and pen and I went under the desk. <laughs> And they were hilarious, they were, they were really laughing at that one there. Either that was an earthquake just now, or RFK just buried another baby bear. Okay. When OJ died, remember OJ, remember that guy? What's the big controversy? The glove, right? Everyone was saying, did he do it, did he not do it? Did he do it? No, the glove didn't fit. The glove didn't fit OJ, right? The glove right. didn't fit OJ. The day OJ died, I tweeted, or X'd, <laughs> I tweeted, give it a couple of days, the glove will eventually fit, okay? <laughs> okay, all right, I got the lights, so I'm gonna close with a comedy tune, because that's yeah. kind of what I do. You guys are great, you know, I did this act for 16 years, well, actually, for a long time after that, but. For 16 years, I, every show was my last. I went up on stage at the comedy store after five years. I was getting the laughs, not getting the breaks. And so I went up and told the audience I was, this is my last show. And everyone was like, and I was serious. And they were looking at me like, what's going on? And then I was free to be funny again because I didn't care, you know? Like I didn't care about getting fired from the comedy store. I didn't care, care about embarrassing myself in front of a big agent. I just, this is, a, this is my last time. So I was funny, really funny, you know? And then at the end of it, I went, you know, you guys have been so great. I'm going to come back tomorrow night and do one more feral performance. And it's true. And then I went on, uh, I did 5,000 feral performances. It's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Across North America, including Canada. Then I went to England. It's what made, them, made me kind of famous, I think, because they love seeing an American give up. So that was the important thing. And I pretend I'm British. When I got back here, I was so te I'm missing the sarcasm in everyday life and, and, you know, being a Brit, you know, it's like, um, uh, you know, uh, 
it's just it's just fun. It's just really, really fun. So you know, I, I would put people on. I go into a Starbucks and I go, excuse me, can can you possibly tell me where I might find the Starbucks ex ex exclusive members club, please? Starbucks exclusive members club? Yes, where the million cup coffee drinkers ha all hang out, not with this riffraff. <laughs> they always believed me. I once, you know, Century City in uh, West LA, Century City, you've heard of it, right? It's, it's, it's a bunch of buildings. It's where, you know, HBO is and, and all these showbiz stuff, and, and uh, mainly. And there's a lot of finance and doctors there, too. So I once went into the, uh, I was walking, and they opened the door, the guard opened the door, and I was in a bad mood. And the best way to get myself out of a bad mood was to do the British character. So I went to this poor guy just opening the fucking door. I went, uh, Excuse me, can you tell me where I might find the mayor of Century City? <laughs> the, the mayor of Century City? What do you mean? Well, you know, the, the gentleman who runs the city, Century City. Oh, no, uh, Century City is an industrial complex, sir. Oh, how god awful. And I walked away. <laughs> All right, lights blinking. I'm just going to close here with uh, just a, a little a sing along here. It's uh, <coughs> it's uh, it's a funny song, and uh, I hope you like it because it's a sing along, okay? And and just next time you're frustrated in life and you don't know what to say, there's too many rules. You might lose your job. Someone might get pissed off or abusing you. Just think of this song. Here we go. My name is Stephen Allen Green Here at House Plant Nation uh, Making the comedy scene And though my set tonight Is nearly ended Aw oh. What I'll say to those of you I may have offended. Fuck you. Fuck you. Don't fuck yourself. Go to hell. Everybody say one, two, three, one, two, three, sing. Fuck you. Beautiful. Fuck you. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Go to hell. Go to hell. So when you walk to work, when you're going to work on Monday, just look at your boss and hum. Mm -hmm. Thank you, good night. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Stephen Allen Green, everybody. Let's give it up for Stephen Allen Green. That song's going to be in my head. Along with It's a Small World, those two are, can fight together. I'm not going to go to sleep tonight. Right. Did you guys have fun tonight?